Some months ago, I built the first computer with an X99 Huanangzhi board, and a Xeon E52690 version 3, CPU. With some months of use and testing, it has been a very successful and reliable computer, so I have reconfigured it, as an Apache server on Win 1064 bit, on my local network. With a six-week delay, the second board turned up from AliExpress in Singapore, and with testing, everything on it worked correctly. Total cost of the board including shipping was just on $150 Australian. With Xeon CPUs having 40 PCI Express lanes, being able to install three NVMe drives was not a problem. The direct NVMe slot on the board has a half terabyte NVMe drive for the operating system and with two accessory adapters, it has two one terabyte drives. As you don't always have the chance to test out a different CPU, one that I wanted to test was a Xeon E52666, a 10 core. 20 thread CPU with a base clock of 2.9 gig and a maximum turbo of 3.5 gig. For an outlay of about $50 US, this would have to be very good bang for your buck, for a 10 core, 20 thread CPU that runs up to 3.5 gig. The board had four, 8 gigabyte memory modules installed, the Win 1064 bit operating system version was installed, and it was now ready for testing. The testing was done with two older techniques, the CPU Z benchmarks and Cinebench 20, to match the period when these CPUs were first introduced. A number of the examples are on high end gigabyte boards, and two results are on the identical Huanangji boards. The CPUs range from an old 6 core i7 clocked at 4 gig to a number of Xeon CPUs with core counts, ranging from 10 to 14 cores. Apart from the old i7 clocked at 4 gig, the E52666 is competitively fast to the higher core count Xeons on the single thread tests. With multiple thread tests, the higher core counts start to show their extra power. Unless you have a reason to go for the higher core counts, the 10 core will deliver a lot of power for most data processing and the money that you save on the CPU can go towards other things like memory or a video card. Now with the test done on the E52666 V3 CPU, I reconfigured the board by swapping the 32GB of memory with the other Huanangji board that had 64GB of memory, as the Apache server did not need 64GB. I had an old water cooler from an earlier computer, a single 120mm fan type, and changed the CPU to a 12-core E52690 V3 model. I assembled the entire package into a test can, and ran it and it worked okay, but put under heavy load, the temperature started to creep up over 60 degrees centigrade, so the cooling was not adequate, for the intended task. Now sad to say, this involved having to buy some new bits, in this case, a Corsair dual 140mm fan liquid cooler, as Xeon CPUs with their large surface area, respond well to a large cooler. I took the Radeon RX 580, from the Apache server, and replaced it with another, that was more than adequate for the task, so I could use it with the new computer. I already had a number of conventional hard disks, that had been used with the test can, and had a leftover SATA SSD that can be used internally. I might add that SATA SSDs are not good value any longer, as they are far slower than an NVMe drive, and close to as expensive. The new can turned up today, a medium-sized Thermaltake case, with a glass side to it. An unusual layout with mountings for two 3.5-inch hard disks at the bottom of the case, accessed from the opposite side, so the cable routing will be interesting. Fortunately, the cooler was no problem to mount, screwed in from the top, and the board fitted okay, safely clearing the cooler fans. With some good fortune, a Xeon E52697 V3 turned up from AliExpress, while the computer was being built, so it has been used instead of the 2690 V3. This is a 14-core CPU, that runs at just under 3.6 gig with low thread usage, so it is reasonably fast for general purpose computing. We will address the performance a little later but this CPU is very good value for the price they are going for at the moment. While the can was no joy to put together, with enough patience, everything went into it okay, and the overall layout has worked well. There was enough room to put two passive disc caddies at the front of the can, as the top one cleared the top mounted radiator. Two hard disks were installed in the locations at the bottom of the can, 
which in total is four hard disks for high volume storage. The reason for the passive disk caddies is that they don't have any unreliable electronics between the disks and the motherboard, which reduces the risk of failure. With the two synthetic benchmarks, the CPU Z timings are typical of a Xeon of this era. The single thread performance is fast enough to be pleasant to use for general purpose computing, while the multi core results show the power of 14 cores for large volume processing. With the Cinebench result, you can see the difference between the three Xeon CPUs that have been tested with this computer. These results show that the more cores a CPU has, the more work it can do in a given time. While synthetic benchmarks give you some idea of how well a computer performs, the final test is if it performs well for the type of work it will be used for. This task is video compression and sharpening of 11 gigabytes of 4K by 60 frames per second video. The task took 52 minutes to complete, and the core temp window shows the average temperature of all cores at 30 minutes through the task. This is a relevant factor when needing to be able to process large volumes of data. The large cooler performs well and the average temperature of all cores stabilized in the first minute of runtime and at the 30 minute mark, is between 50 and 55 degrees centigrade which is easily safe enough. This computer was not designed as a show pony, right from the start, it was designed as a workhorse that has to be able to grunt through large volumes of data. It has four hard disks, one 4 terabyte and three 8 terabyte drives as large storage is a requirement for this computer. On the performance side of storage, it has three NVMe drives for tools and apps that must load quickly, and with 64 gig of memory, it can run a RAM disk for some special purpose tasks. The video card is a mid-performance AMD Radeon RX 580, that is more than adequate for its intended tasks. As this video card is not overclocked, it runs cool enough for the cooling fans not to turn on, while delivering very good 60fps video and high-quality video output. As the second Huanangji X99BD4 board, it has passed all the tests and delivers reliable performance, and with the price of both the board, and any of the tested Xeon processes, it would have to be classed as good value for money, for what is a reasonably high-powered computer. Hi, I'm Jack, the narrator for this video. I am a high-tech, text-to-speech voice and with all due modesty, a clear and easy-to-understand narration. This video is copyright Steve Hutchison, 2022 and all rights are reserved.